glad and honored to be joined in this cozy sofa by two distinguished guests. And I would uh, like to let you introduce yourself and then we'll start with some questions. So, uh, ladies first, right? <laughs> I'm uh, Bandana Ryder. I'm general counsel for a not-for-profit based out of Canada that broke going global quickly called Argeti.org. We are creating the Rain Arctic Sanctuary. Thank you. And my name is Darcy Belanger. I am the director of strategic initiatives for Parvati.org, and I live in Denver, Colorado, and I oversee the U.S. operations of, uh, of Parvati. And Parvati is a partner of We Don't Have Time, which we're very honored to, to say. Uh, so uh, we'll jump into questions directly. Um, we hear a lot here, not least, about melting sea ice and uh, 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 increasing sea levels. Um, so how bad is actually the, the situation in the Arctic as we speak now? Is it as bad as we hear? Is it even yeah, worse? Can you stay with that for a while? Tell us if you know. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Arctic in general um, is feeling the brunt of climate change. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of um, uh, thaw happening in the Arctic Ocean, the Arctic sea ice, the Arctic seabed. And this is dramatically underreported in the mainstream media. Um, what we've seen over the past 50 years or so is a loss of about 75% of the Arctic sea ice. And of course, the sea ice uh, helps keep the planet cool through the albedo, uh, albedo effect. It reflects solar radiation back into space, and just the ice in general helps to regulate ocean currents and weather patterns around the world. So as we lose that sea ice, it's having a, a, a massive effect on accelerating the um, increase in temperatures around the world. Um, and then, you know, what's troubling, rather than seeing this as a, a cause for concern, uh, there are countries and companies that are interested in getting into the Arctic Ocean now that it is free of ice and starting to drill for more oil and gas or sending international shipping through the Arctic Ocean. Um, deep sea mining and other activities like this, which we feel is just extremely short-sighted and extremely risky and will only destabilize the Arctic Ocean further. Um, and so um, we're extremely concerned about these activities and we're, we're working hard to try to create a scenario where we can keep the Arctic Ocean free of this kind of exploitation. And, and can, you, can you just stay for a little while with how, um, what's currently being done um, as a, in your organization um, and perhaps what's being done on a larger scale? Sure, I'll have to answer that question. Thanks, Martin. We have drafted an international treaty called the Marine Arctic Peace Sanctuary Treaty. It's an addendum to the UN Law of the Sea. And essentially what it does is it places the entire Arctic Ocean above the Arctic Circle off limits from all exploitation. So all commercialization, all militarization, all industrialization of the Arctic Ocean is not permitted in the Arctic Ocean with the Marine Arctic Peace Sanctuary Treaty. And we have had the treaty tran uh, translated into all six UN languages. We've mailed it around the world to all 193 member states of the United Nations. World leaders are eligible for uh, to sign the treaty, uh, heads of state, heads of government, and ministers of foreign affairs. We have the Prime Minister of Samoa, who has already signed the treaty. And Sorry. the Prime Minister, Prime Minister of Samoa has already signed the treaty. And we are here at COP actively um, soliciting more treaty signatures from world leaders because we, we don't have time. As your organization well knows, the ice is melting very quickly. Another reason, the reason we drafted the treaty, um, which is outside of the typical UN protocol for treaty um, creation, is because treaty negotiations just typically take way too long. The, um, the current treaty that's being negotiated under the UN, under the auspices of the UN, is the Treaty to Protect Biodiversity in the high seas. And discussions regarding whether or not to enter into treaty negotiations started back in 2003. And they did just commenced formal treaty negotiations um, in September, and they're scheduled to last two years. Well, if we were to follow the typical UN protocols, we would not have a chance of saving the Arctic Ocean from exploitation. So that is uh, that is the mechanism that we're using. We're um, and we, we have to follow this 
process so that we can try to save the ocean, save the planet, and protect all life on Earth. Thanks. It's, it sounds like something that, that should have been done a long time ago and that, that the work has been started in UN, for instance. But since it takes so long, that's the starting ground for, for your organization. So you wanted to do it differently. Um, can you also tell us a bit of how, besides head of states, um, or besides the, um, uh, the head of state of, of Samoa, uh, other different levels of, of people that you've engaged, are there more examples of people that signed it? And also, if you just uh, talk a little bit about so the Marine Arctic Peace Sanctuary, that's the maps. So, so uh, what you want people to do now, taking having this knowledge from, from our talk and, and from what you do and how you spread that, and what you want people to actually take action on. Either of you? So, correct, the, the, the treaty is called the Marine Arctic Peace Sanctuary Treaty, and as Vondana says, it declares the entire Arctic Ocean north of the Ar Arctic Circle off limits to exploitation. Um, the treaty is before heads of government, heads of state, ministers of foreign affairs around the world. We have sent the treaty to every country in the world multiple times. Um, what regular people can do, like you and I, is put pressure on their elected officials to sign the treaty. So we're working at two levels. We're working at the international policy level, which is the treaty. But then we're also working at a grassroots level with people around the world, volunteers around the world, people we call MAPS ambassadors, who've been trained to deliver a, a presentation on MAPS, to go into their schools, their universities, their places of work, their places of, of worship, and deliver uh, this presentation to inspire others in their community to raise a call to put pressure on their elected officials to sign the MAPS Treaty. Um, we're all volunteers in this organization. None of us are, um, are being paid. This is all entirely a grassroots movement that is getting grassroots attention around the world. And we're giving a very tangible and a very real way that people around the world can take action, whether it's through signing the petition on our website, becoming a MAPS ambassador, volunteering with us, or simply writing a letter to their elected official, or organizing a rally, an event. This is happening everywhere, and it's all coming from a very organic, very grassroots place. Super, uh, super psyched to be part of this, uh, um, to support your, your, your course, which is also ours and all of us, because it's, uh, it's really like, uh, it's, it's like the uh, thermostat of, of, of the earth. It, it, it what keeps the climate in some sort of, of a harmony, even though it's not very harmonical. <laughs> you know, think about harmony and climate these days. So uh, I would just like to, uh, to thank you for um, having your sanctuary um, um, covering what's good for, for all, uh, and not only good, but it's, 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 a, it's a common need. Um, so we are really uh, happy to have you here uh, on board today, and we're really happy to be on board on, on your journey. And uh, so those that want to read more can go to, to your website or to our website. Uh, at we don't have time, we have a section where we have uh, you as presented as partner and uh, and join you as uh, signing the maps would be the most imminent uh, action that anyone can take, and uh, and then becoming ambassadors even even better because you can engage uh, and, and spread spread this important message along. Okay, good. So thanks so much for coming, and uh, uh, love to see you uh, back sometime someday, either in Sweden or elsewhere. Thanks. Thank you, Martin. Thanks.